two syringe trap technique for treating telangiectasias. Three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy, trap, corrects hemodynamic hypertension of the venous circulation in the limbs, the anatomical cause of which is the valvular incontinence of the perforating veins. As venous pathology is three-dimensional, its treatment must also be three-dimensional. Indeed, two-dimensional techniques, sclerotherapy, phlebectomy and laser therapy are irrational. They only treat the effect of the venous pathology, the visible veins, and not the cause. These methods eliminate the outlet valve of a hemodynamic hypertension that they are unable to cure. Deprived of its natural outlet valve, this hypertension causes numerous capillaries to dilate, creating what we call matting. If the reticular veins resist the dilatation caused by the hemodynamic hypertension due to the valvular incontinence of the perforating veins, telangiectasias will form. If, by contrast, the reticular veins dilate, no telangiectasias form. In TRAP, the ectatic capillaries are injected, just as venules, reticular veins, trunchular and perforating veins are injected. Indeed, there is no pathogenetic difference between a large varix and an ectatic cap capillary. Only one limb at a time is treated, starting with the one with the most severe pathology. The lower limb is divided into three longitudinal regions, medial, lateral and posterior. The regenerative solution of 3% sodium salicylate in a buffered hydroglycerin vehicle is systematically injected into the visible vessels of one region, working from the bottom upwards. The solution must reach the deep veins. Up to a maximum of 12 milliliters of solution is injected per single injection. It's not always possible to inject effective quantities of regenerative solution from 3 to 12 milliliters as the amount depends on the dilatation and expandability of the underlying venous circulation and on the fragility of the venous walls. If the telangiectasias are very fine and cannot be injected with the 25G needle and the 20 milliliter syringe, the two syringe technique is used. Before using the two syringe technique, the operator must in any case have corrected the hemodynamic hypertension in the limb by injecting the 3% regenerative solution into the visible veins until they completely disappear. It should be borne in mind that the veins in the lower limbs should not be visible. Since humans began to stand upright, the lower limb has become a pump that drives blood from the foot to the right atrium, and any pump must necessarily empty its collectors. The two syringe technique uses one 2.5 milliliter syringe and one 1 milliliter syringe. Into the 2.5 milliliter syringe we can aspirate the 6% solution of sodium salicylate in a buffered hydroglycerin vehicle. Alternatively, we can aspirate 1.5 milliliters of 6% solution and 1.5 milliliters of 10% solution. Combining these two concentrations creates an 8% solution. The 10% solution can be used to treat matting and high pressure capillaries. We always add half a milliliter of 2% lidocaine to the vials that contain the 6% solution and the 10% solution. Into the 1 milliliter syringe we put 0 0.2 milliliters of lidocaine and then fill up the syringe with the dilution liquid. 30G needles and or 27G needles are used for both syringes. 
In order to reach the effective concentration of 3% in depth, higher concentrations will be injected, as the solution is diluted in the invisible circulation. Thus, if the ectatic capillaries are very fine and under high pressure, it will be necessary to use the highest concentration and carry out several injections. Naturally, the higher the concentration, the higher the risk of a residual skin lesion at the point of injection, where a tiny wheel almost always forms. In this case, the 1 ml syringe is used to dilute the solution that has caused the wheel, thereby eliminating the risk of skin damage. The 1 ml syringe, which has a small diameter, enables the dilution solution to be easily injected into the thickness of the dermis. Dilution should be performed immediately after injection of the concentrated solution. For this reason, the 1 ml syringe must be kept within easy reach on the table. To access this material you must subscribe to the crpub.org medical video journal. Subscription is free and reserved for medical doctors only.